Hi, I'm Jeff Ponsoinet, and here you are in my kind of like window display, which is kind of an homage that we're doing on Rachel for uh, the online exhibition that Luc has accepted to do in the context of all this confinement and the fact that we can't visit galleries these days. So Luc, uh, thank you so much. And I think one of the challenges I put to you is to look back at your archives and you are actually releasing a number of works that are from your photographic practice. But you are first and foremost known as a new media artist. You are the first artist uh, to win the Prix Bordeaux with a career in uh, innovative media arts. And so I'd be curious to tell, to, for you to tell us how does this photographic paper-based or uh, material-based uh, work fit in uh, your vision of the practice that you have been working at for many, many years. Well, first of all, Pierre François, it's really an honor to, to be invited by you uh, in your uh, écurie of artists. Uh, we've been working together for like almost 20 years now, so it was a blessing for me. You basically uh, introduced me to uh, the beautiful relationship that exists between an artist and the collectors, the people who who go forward and acquire work, and they there is a special relationship uh, there that I didn't know about until I showed with you. Anyway, so the the, whole, the 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 my experience with galleries started at TPW in Toronto in two thousand and and two, and uh, I was never uh, intending to present these uh, these circular images, what I call penoscopic images. Uh, uh, public uh, as as themselves because they were destined to my uh, projection display like hemispheric display and basically these images were the raw images that I could collect with this special lens that I could fit on top of the of, uh, of the camera uh, but they were not meant to be exhibited like this they were meant to be projected and once you're inside the panoscope they 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 don't look distorted at all they look perfectly normal. So uh, when TPW offered me to do a show, I was puzzled at first, but I said, why not? And that's where we met, I think. Uh, you saw the exhibition, and uh, I decided that uh, it was interesting to try to uh, develop uh, my career as a, as, as an, a gallery artist. Uh, but I, I discovered that the, 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 the images, even that they are anamorphic, distorted, they still work. And this is... This explains why you can turn them. If you go to next to the images, you can you can turn them to uh, put the part you want to look, you know, uh, on the top of the image because the, the 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 disc represents the whole horizon, and you see it as an object. But in fact, you you never look at the whole thing. You look at, you will look at details, and for this you need to turn it. But by turning it. Uh, you basically reproduce what you would do inside a dome or a hemispheric projection system. You, you would turn around, you would turn your body. Here you don't turn your body, you turn the image. But the result is similar. So the experience of immersion that you will feel by turning this is similar to the one you would have if you had a head-mounted display or if you were in a dome. Yeah, you see? So this is... This is uh, uh, you sort of edit your your own uh, field of vision by turning the the disc. And tell me, because you've been doing that for quite a few years now, and how has the change in technology, the evolution in, uh, in technology, influence your making of these uh, photographs? Yeah, well, immersion is not a new idea. I mean, before cinema in the 19th century, you had, uh, before cinema, you had these like immersive panorama that people paid to go and spend 15, 20 minutes in there. So, uh, and then uh, I, when I was 14, I saw, uh, I saw a, a similar uh, thing at Expo 67, you know, the bell, kind of, the, the telephone pavilion had a cyclorama uh, there that was uh, like a, a, a film that took you through Canada. So I, as a 14-year-old boy, I said, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know how difficult it was to produce, but I thought this was like a, an interesting medium and everybody 
loved it. It was one of the most uh, 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 sort of visited pavilion at Expo 67. But uh, it took me a long time to, f to, to figure out you know, uh, uh, that it could be done. Uh, the, uh, you saw uh, by the middle of the, of the 90, 1990s, Apple came with QuickTime VR, which was a way to, to record panorama and to display them on a, on a rectangular computer screen, but by, you could shift the world around if you want. And then you had uh, several companies developing uh these uh, uh these these uh, cameras that could capture the whole horizon in a single shot uh one of them was a cyclovision technology in new york they were mostly meant for uh, surveillance you know you could adapt these two cameras and you could see from a single data screen everything that was around an elevator shaft for example something like that but uh, I was um, I was in touch with the engineers of the company, and uh, we could adapt their 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 special optical system to a high definition camera and video camera that were coming out at the time. So that's how I started to to do these single channel immersive displays. Uh, eventually, uh, as as the immersion picked up, you know, as 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 a medium, as a practical medium. You had more companies interested in developing uh, products for it, and so I worked with that first, you know, optical system for five or six years until uh, the other types of camera came out, and the VR was a big motivation. You know, when people started to uh, develop contents for virtual reality, in virtual reality you can see everything around. So. Uh, the, the, the market was developing for that. So companies like Rico, for example, developed a, a camera called the Teta, which is very, very small and uh, something you can have in your pocket. And then with a, just a, a, a click, you can capture the whole uh, spherical image around you. So I, I start. I left the uh, the first system and I started to uh, to work with that system. And I always have it on me. So whenever I travel. Uh, this is why I call these images the, my panoscopic journal. It's because uh, I just document my life, basically, my whereabouts. Uh, if I go somewhere, if, if I see something interesting, I, I take thousands of pictures like this. And the best ones, the ones that work, I will uh, eventually uh, edit them and, uh, and reproduce them for shows like the one you have. Well, I think it's very exciting to know that you're releasing 30 images that go back 20 years ago to today and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing how different themes are emerging in your selection and so i'm very excited about that so i'll welcome everyone that is listening to us to check out to the online exhibition well look thank you so so much and by the magic of all these new technology here we are yeah, even uh, Marc uh, Garneau is there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marc is, is an artist from the neighborhood who just picked up his chicken from the yeah. uh, chicken place next door. So it's really quite funny, the interaction. And, you know, even though the show will be all online, I really wanted a physical presence. And yeah. so before the first few every day, the works will be available. To, well, uh, a chain day to the work will be uh, in the window display of the gallery. By the way, I have to congratulate you for moving your gallery from downtown to this beautiful Rachel Street because you're offering, you're very generous, even in times of pandemic where the gallery is closed, you still have this beautiful window that you offer to the passersby. And on Rachel Street in Montreal, there's so many people, bikers, pedestrians, that will um, that will uh, get familiar with art just because you have this, uh, this generous uh, space. And uh, I think it's really very interesting because it's offering different perspective on what people can expect in art. So thank you so much, Luke, uh, for your work. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to see what you're all doing. Till soon. Bye.